I, 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 we got Mr. Beast. We funded a gym for our adaptive athletes. We found a gym in Texas that trains people in the most unconventional ways. Ah! Ah! This is the last time you wish you didn't wake up. Bo Jones. Shelby Estacado. Brandy Fields. Nephilim Mendoza. Ryan Chen. Uh, this was in 2009 when I was 19 years old. Four years ago. Everything drastically changed. I stepped on an IED. And lost both my legs. I suffered a triple A aortic aneurysm. I had a snowboarding accident and I suffered a T6 spinal cord injury and broke my sternum. Decided to go on the park run, hit one of the big jumps and I couldn't see the landing. I landed on my back and shattered my spine. My stepdad and I got into a verbal argument at a family gathering at my aunt's house. It got pretty heated. He had left and maybe Two hours later, my mother and I would get home and he'd be waiting for me. So as we got to the house, my mom entered and he got out of his seat and started coming towards the door. And all I heard was like, no, no, no. And then I heard a shot go off. From my perspective, I thought he shot my mom. As soon as I opened up the door, he shot me three times without hesitation. I was instantly paralyzed on impact. And I don't remember anything after that. I can only imagine the devastating no. feeling as they realize the significant impact this will have on the rest of their lives. With the mindset that I was in, it struggles. It's hard going from like 21 year old in shape war fighter to you wake up in a hospital and you can't even feed yourself. My mindset was very negative. I, I hated the way I looked. I hated the way I felt. And I was crying and I was in pain from like the nerve pain that I had since my accident. I think rock bottom was really me really debating whether I wanted to live this life, whether this was, you know, a life worth living. I've been doing jiu-jitsu as an amputee. I was trying to move forward, and it wasn't until I had a really bad training day. It was so bad that I got back into the car, and I wanted to kill myself. After my injury, I spent about 10 years still waking up every day. Like, today's gonna be the day I'm with myself. I remember waking up in the ICU, it told me I'm paralyzed from the chest down. But then something amazing happened at a point that was undoubtedly one of the lowest of their lives. They decided to not give up, but to fight even harder and crush every goal in life despite the change in plans. I immediately told them, I'm gonna walk. And uh, six days later, I had started moving my right big toe. And I remember my first steps were on uh, July 11th and they were assisted steps, but they were my first steps. steps. Yeah. If I can go back in time, tell my 19-year-old self that I was gonna be okay, I wouldn't believe it, let alone <laughs> the fact that you know, I will be able to fly a plane one day, that I will start a company with my best friend and be able to make my parents so proud. I started surrounding myself with people that told me what I didn't see myself. I never wanna feel that low and that helpless and that weak again. I had to stop feeling sorry for myself. We talk about things that we can and cannot do. I don't believe there's anything that you can't do. You just have to find an adaptable way to do it. Which is the reason for all these athletes' change in mindset. A gym called ATF. 10 years ago, ATF was founded by David Vorbora, a former NFL player who had a one chance encounter that changed everything. I wish I could tell you that, you know, this was some formidable business plan, but it wasn't. When he first started this, he had met Travis Mills, an amputee Travis who Hill. got blown up and lost all four limbs. I walked directly up to him without hesitation, full eye contact, and I said, how much do you bench with that one arm? And he said, what did you just say to me? He laughed. Yeah, he laughed, yeah. He said, I, I, no one's ever really walked up to me and asked me that. And yeah. I, it started with him, and then I had another veteran. He would actually let him know first. They'd be like, yeah, hey, I don't know if anyone asked you this, but how much? And 10 <laughs> and 20, and I think that was the catalyst for me to go, we can't stop doing this. But how does someone like David quit a promising NFL career to pursue this instead? Well, the answer lies in the past. 16 years ago, David Vorbora was drafted into the NFL, and from early on, he was described as a ruthless gladiator. But what seemed to be the start of an illustrious career all came crashing down. After suffering a catastrophic shoulder injury, David was admitted to the hospital and got hooked on the painkillers he was given, becoming one of the 16 million people affected by the opioid crisis. And it was only after going to rehab and getting clean that he finally decided to stop playing pro football. I've used quite a various amount of drugs in my life, and there's no drug that is like playing in 
American pro football. To make a tackle and the cathedral explodes and it's just, there's just nothing like it. You just feel like more than a man, you feel so supreme and so powerful. That felt really good, but it was amnesic. It felt like I just have to go back to find my next fix. The difference in that and the way that I get to do what I do now is, you know, when that bell rings and I get to be right there and that person has that moment, there's this really cool kind of balance that gives me this like hit of nothing could be more important than exactly where I am right here, right now. But the difference is, is it doesn't wash off. I think that's the parallel is we we're not going to make this gym about changing the world for them. We wanted to change them for the world. Suffice to say, we were really curious to learn more about Dave and the ATF athletes. So I sent Dan and Darren to Texas to see how Beast Philanthropy could help out. ATF is a free gym for people living with physical or traumatic impairments. And what's so unique about this place is a system they call sweat equity. We all sweat together and we all bond together through working out. And this is what like it looks like. Go. Let's go, push. Oh, she's fast. Hey, strong. People with shared experience are best equipped to help their peers because they understand the challenges so much better. This shared experience and understanding has built an incredible community of athletes that are fully invested in helping every single person achieve their highest potential. That's just fire. That's just fire. I like how they ring the bell, too. You ring the bell when you hit your personal PR or do something that you didn't think that you were able to do. That bell is for a celebratory moment and everybody just stops in the gym and we're all just like, yeah. This is such an important lesson to every one of us. Our own struggles and achievements may be the breakthrough that someone else desperately needs. Sometimes you will even find that helping others is the breakthrough you need for yourself. I was presented with the opportunity to come to the Adaptive Training Foundation. It was life-changing. With the workout almost finished. It was his call. Foundation. Y'all want to do this? What is this called? It's like a simulator. With the workout almost finished, Brendy was attempting to set a new personal weightlifting record. I look kind of cool. I ain't gonna lie. I kind of look kind of cool. Brendy was attempting to set a new personal. This kind of look. I ain't. This kind of look cool. It look fire. At least to me. Record. I was in my head a little bit, but I had to dig deep. Oh, you almost had it. So many people around me cheering for me, knowing I had that support. I was like, let me do anything I can to get this weight off the ground. Get the chalk. Come on, come on. Oh, she did it! Each of these people made a decision not to give up, not to lose hope, but rather to get up and fight as hard as they could to be the best that they could under a new set of circumstances. I did it, and it felt amazing. This is some stuff I never thought that I would be able to do. So lifting 220 pounds, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! After seeing these incredible athletes at work, we decided to surprise Dave and the ATF gym with something special. For the surprise, Dan and Darren set up a little game. Here are the rules, come here. Darren, um, long time no see. Yep. I'm gonna give you $50,000. $50,000 if you catch it. Each time you miss, you're gonna give me $1,000. How far back do I need to go? From wherever you wanna do it. 50 grand. Yeah. Ah. Oh! <laughs> For the last throw, David entrusted Dan to bring it home, but Darren had a twist. If Dan blows it, you get nothing. Can Dan handle the pressure? It all comes down to this. Dang, Darren! Let me show you how we do stuff around here. Sounds about Monday. My department uses Monday.com, so I don't use Monday. But before we see if Dave raises a quarter of a million dollars for ATF, I want to give a massive shout out to our partner, Stand Together. Stand Together has been supporting this incredible Jay, program. Mr. Beast, are you going to skip your ass? We were working with ATF. They also made an incredibly generous I don't know, donation. I don't skip, I don't skip Just like Beast Philanthropy, right. Stand Together believes that we have unlimited potential to achieve extraordinary goals when we believe in ourselves. And Dave has shown the incredible power you can have over others you love when you show them you believe in them too. And now back to the video.
That's what you got. You serious? I'll round it up to you, though. Love you, brother. Um, I love you. Oh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> There's a saying that I love, that the character is like steel and has to be forged in fire. Several of the people that we have talked to have talked about the fact that they would not go back and undo the injury or the accident that they had. And that is tremendous. That is one of the most inspiring things. That this guy is fire, bro. Everything in the universe happened. This is fire. If I had never stepped up. Look at this. That they had talked about the fact that they would not go back and undo the injury no, that, that's the accident bro. that they had. And Look that, at this that fire. Is tremendous. That is one of the most inspiring things that gave me goosebumps each time I heard it. Everything in the universe happens for a reason. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. That bomb, I never would have been able to see one what I was truly made of, but also how I could help the world in a more positive way. After going through my injury and being where I am now and having the perspective I have on the world, I feel like I'm a stronger person than I ever could have been. It was only through these people's trauma that they discovered their true inner strength to meet life's biggest challenges head on and never ever quit. This is a lesson for every one of us with whatever challenges we face that feels so overwhelming to us. Don't give up and you will surprise yourself with your own inner strength. Dave wants to build a brand new $20 million center where he can not only train more athletes and help them be their best, but also train more adaptive athlete coaches to take this amazing program back to their communities. So please click the donate button or the link in the description to help make this a reality. Shout out to Mr. Beats. All these people are inspirational, man.